Okay, welcome back. We are live here in San Francisco. Oracle Open World 2013, this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events, we start to see them from the noise. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, uh, co-founder of wikibon.org. And we have back returning CUBE alumni, Kevin Chu, who's the global vice president, managed cloud services business and technology alliances. Uh, you've been on theCUBE multiple times. You've been on SAP, you've been in all, uh, as well as with EMC. EMC Ventures, um, congratulations. Thank you, Jim. And we're breaking news today because you just recently have been promoted from to uh, Global Vice President of Managed Cloud. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Um, always breaking news on theCUBE. SAP, Oracle, you're sneaking under the radar. You get, they let you come in here. Well, it, yeah. it's, it's amazing what kind of synergies actually between SAP and Oracle there are. If you look at, there, there's obviously competing layers in the stack, but there's a tremendous amount of business that SAP drives on top of Oracle database and Oracle infrastructure. That, that, that's not going to change um, in the near, ter in the near well, future. Well, before we get to that, before we get down to some of the competitions, some of the product stuff, we want to get into the new job, want to get into what you're doing. So sure. you, you, we've known you, you're at EMC Ventures. Uh, you were part of the early crew, I call the outpost of EMC, to get out here and you know, survey the landscape of Silicon Valley. You and the team, Mark Lewis, Sean Douglas, really did the heavy lifting. Um, knocked down a lot of deals. Um, Nasira's one of them, a bunch of other deals. Um, and then now, you, now, Sean went to Service Mesh, you went to SAP. Great run. Um, you were there early on all the SD, SD you know, software defined everything, networking, storage, uh, now data center. You saw a lot of stuff. The cloud was right there on your watch, you know, really developing, and the big data world. So, talk about your new role, what happened in with SAP and the recent promotion. Thanks, so <laughs> let me just back up for a second. So right around 2008, that was a great time at EMC to be starting EMC Ventures. So the whole idea, you nailed it, was, was to get a Silicon Valley listening post um, out here to really understand some of the major tectonic, technical shifts that were happening within cloud, big data, and, and, and back then, I, mean, I remember sitting in my office and writing a you know, white paper that was, I, I called it internet scale databases. And it was because the word big data didn't even, didn't even exist, which was pretty shocking. That's kind of like the information superhighway right before the web was born. Yeah, and, you it, know? It, like, and it was yeah. all about machine data, it was all about streaming data, it was all about biometric data. And so that, 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 that was some ma a major tipping point for the Joe realized that, well, you know, there, we've got three smart guys, me, Mark, and Sean, are out here in Silicon Valley with our ears to the ground listening to what's going on. This could be highly relevant to what's happening back in Hopkinson. So that, that, was, that, that was an important part. And you say it was a great time, and the market was just crashing, right? <laughs> I mean, and that's classic Joe Tucci, yeah. contrarian, right? I yeah. want to come out of this downturn stronger, and the way I'm going to do that is invest in the hottest place in the world for investing. Absolutely, yeah. and as, as, the market was, was, as the market was taking you know, a, a bit of a pause at that time, it was also, but it was also the technology, there was a technology refresh happening. So cloud was just going mainstream, big data was going mainstream, hybrid cloud management, which was one of, one of my, my pet areas, was, was, was just becoming into its own, and, and, and is now becoming mainstream. So if, fast forward three years, um, left, left EMC and EMC Ventures, and are now started back at, at SAP um, in, in January of this year, of 2013. So I originally dropped in to, to run technology alliances. So that, that's looking after all the, all the technology partners which have tremendous relevance to the new SAP stack. So that, that's, we're talking about Hewlett Packard, Dell, Microsoft, IBM, Oracle. There's a lot of different, um, a lot of different technology partners have a nice strong play in that new SAP stack. And what I mean by that is, say five years ago, before you know, the release of HANA, before uh, SAP acquired business objects and Sybase, SAP as a pure applications company really didn't give two shakes about what was happening at the storage layer, or at the middleware tiers, or at the networking tiers. And that, that now with the, you know, with the, with the, uh, with the uh, importance of those different layers of the, of the database with the release of HANA, with the acquisition of Sybase and business objects, now the, the importance of what's happening at storage, what's happening in networking, is of utmost importance to our customers and controlling that entire technology stack. But your philosophy and how you're approaching that is 
is quite a bit different than, say, Oracle's, right? I mean, you're doing that with an ecosystem approach uh, versus Oracle trying to, and Mike, uh, 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 Bill McDermott's been on theCUBE talking about that. He talked to you, John, about that in the past, saying, hey, we're focused on the application business. We're not trying to you know, own the entire stack. Is that, is that still the case, or do you feel as though there's an opportunity maybe to, to more vertically integrate? I think if, if you look at what, what Oracle has made strategic acquisitions, both in storage, compute layer, at the networking layer, th those are areas which never say never, but those are areas where, where SAP um, would probably never go. A a SAP at its core DNA is an applications company and now a database and middlewares company. So th th that is core competency, that is home ground for us. And, and, and especially when it comes to, you look at the total adjustable market of something like a middleware tier and a database tier, it's, it, th that takes SAP's TAM to the stratosphere. And so from that perspective, it op opens up everything wide for the company. Plenty of opportunity. Talk yeah. about the virtual stream situation. Obviously, um, Daytake made a lot of hay with big, uh, big investment mm -hmm. recently. Um, Devil in capacity, Hana's booming. Mm -hmm. uh, what is what, what, what's the what's the P and L look like for your role? Obviously, you got, you're on a P and L now basis, which is great. It means you're managing a business. Uh, what's the product? What's, what's, the, what's the competition look like? You know, and, what, and what's the dynamic with VirtuStream? Is that in your wheelhouse? Is that part of your deal? A couple different questions. So the, the, the VirtuStream, it's very important for, for our customers to have the portability across hybrid cloud. So when, whether it's private cloud like a VirtuStream, whether it's public cloud like an AWS, or our own HANA Enterprise Cloud. So within, within my wheelhouse of the business, I'm, I'm, I'm now Global Vice President for the managed cloud as a service business. This is working very closely with our private cloud partners. So let me give you some examples. So VirtuStream is a great example of, of companies that have SAP expertise. So over time, you know, companies like um, VirtuStream, Atos Origin, HCL, HP, they, they, they've, they are hosting SAP customers. So, you know, for instance, another great one, T-Systems. T-Systems in Germany hosts about 500 SAP customers, full landscape. So, so T-Systems, unbeknownst to a lot of folks, T-Systems hosts one of the largest SAP instances for Shell. And so when you talk about SAP expertise, I, I think the bellwether is that there's a bit, a bit of a blending happening between and a gray area happening between pure hosting partners who you would have thought would have been pure hosting partners, like a telco, like a T-Systems. Well, they went out and bought um, systems integration expertise uh, that have you know, thousands of consultants that know how to do not only SAP application management services, but they know how to do, they know how to do custom applications so they can provide and turn So there is a blending going on right now, totally. big time. Totally, so, so like, like companies like T-Systems can, can provide total end-to-end -end infrastructure management, application tuning, performance management, and, and give it a customer a full experience for a very complicated landscape like an SAP. So, so th th those are my partners, th th those are my Is those Cap are my Gemini part of your partnership alliance? Absolutely, absolutely. And so, CSC? Yep, so all, all of those major partners that have SAP practices for, for hosting. So Hewlett Packard is a, another great example. So if you look at the HP services organization, we, we we did a major deal which was announced just two weeks ago. So it was a, a large deal in Australia where they, where they bought, since they already had such expertise in SAP landscapes and they knew SAP customers, then they bought excess capacity. And what I mean by that is that they're buying inventory because at a, at a, at a, at a at the economics of them taking their intellectual property, wrapping it around our, our IP, and ultimately providing customers turnkey value, HP did that capacity deal in advance of customers actually requesting it, So which, which is pretty cool. Because now, now suddenly we've got a, a ready-made channel. So VMware, as you know, um, Pat did a very similar deal um, about four weeks ago, and, then, and then that was something that, so the HP deal, the VMware deal, th th those are bellwether deals when it comes to major infrastructure companies that are adopting SAP technology, because they know that that's the... This uh, has been a new incremental opportunity for SAP in the way to get more expansion, market expansion, right? I mean, yeah, it, I mean it, not it, incremental, I mean, I don't mean new, but it's more market expansion. It's additional territory they can, they can put on top of their core business, right? It, it's alternative channels, and I, and I think me coming in fresh, you know, in the organization, I'm, I, I, I wasn't, um, I wasn't wedded necessarily to just the, all yeah. the, the, pri the primary channels that made SAP what, what it is today, I was, I was looking for alternative channels and really from a BD perspective, able to grow that. Yeah, and think about the day, we, Dave and I always reminisce about how old we are and the big, you know, <laughs> Alliance server days and, you know, 
It was the big six accounting firms, essentially consulting mm -hmm. firms, but were turned into being the monster you know, integrators mm -hmm. for the SAP days and the Oracle. Now it's like big six million integrators out there, potentially, you know, developers. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know? And, and I think, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, over, sim, over, you know, over stretching that, but I mean, there's now literally so many new channels. And to that point, I think if you look at, you know, the SAP, SAP is a 40 year old company, and for the past 30 years, SAP's been very focused on the traditional model of you license our software, you go out and hire you know, the global SI, like an Accenture or Deloitte or Capgemini, and they drop in a bunch of consultants on your prem, buy, go out and buy hardware, and so now the, the evolution of those consulting companies is now into, like, look, look at HCL. HCL is a great example of how they, they have development capacity, they have consulting capacity, but yet they've they got very focused expertise in particular areas, like, like automotive, a retail. You know, here, here in North America, we just did some great um, retail deals and great automotive deals for our customers because HCL has particular domain expertise to make those customers wildly successful. So th th that's, the, th that's the evolution of, of from a pure SI to a global outsourcer to a managed cloud as a service partner. So there's a big battle looming, obviously. Um, we're hearing a lot about Oracle 12C in memory. It's, I'm sure, driven a lot of traffic to, to your booth here at the show. Um, I wonder if we could talk about that a little bit. You know, these, the decisions that customers make now are going to reverberate for years to come. They're going to have implications on the customers, implications on their suppliers. There's going to be you know, maintenance agreements that are, that are locked in. So there's a lot of Oracle customers running SAP. We know that. They can sit and watch and wait and try to see what happens around, uh, around in memory. They can move to 12C and you know, stay on the Oracle track or they can make a bet on HANA, or they can maybe go somewhere else. Um, what are you guys seeing? Talk about the uptake in HANA. How do you see you know, 12C and, and, and Oracle's sort of rhetoric affecting that play, the pricing? Uh, you're starting to see some interesting dynamics occur in the marketplace, and customers are confused, they're nervous. You know, some of them are dogmatic and, and loyal. What are you guys seeing? So, so, so Dave, we just crossed over our 2000th HANA customer. And I think Oracle's announcement around 12C in memory and IBM's announcement around Blue, which is very similar, it's taking uh, an antiquated database technology, which was not designed from the ground up for in-memory processing or the combination of OLTP processing and analytics. That's really the power of where HANA is driving. And also, SAP, the DNA is the application level company. And so the, the, the knowledge, the brand, the intelligence of the application layer and the control point of the application layer is everything to SAP. That fusion of the control of the application layer and the database layer, as you're going to see, there's going to be, you know, in the past, if you, if you, with the way that custom applications were developed, maybe you had a trigger or a stored procedure sitting in the, data, in the database container of, of Oracle, but that was something that a consultant wrote for you that is a derivative product of, off of SAP or Oracle applications. And so that's something that is not supported and not something that is actually running native in the Oracle database. What you're going to see is that as, as, as the data, the database, and the applications grow closer and closer, the, 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 the processing and the logic will move into a tighter alignment between the SAP application and the SAP HANA database. That's critical because then now suddenly you're going to have, you're going to have processes that used to, um, be executing at the application tier are now going to be executing closer to the database where, where that application level can take advantage of the database server. Yeah, and so ultimately what I see it come down to from a customer standpoint is, <laughs> is the business value. And that's one of the things I've always loved about SAP. You know, I wasn't able to go to Sapphire this year. I had a conflict, but I've been you know, several years in a row. And the discussion is at the business value level. That's where it <laughs> starts. You know, it's great when Hasso gets up there and talk, you know, geeks yeah, out yeah, yeah. a little bit. It's, 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 it's awesome, actually. But, but it's really uh, an event that's, that's unique in that sense. It's really dri driving business value. So what are, the, what are the conversations like? You know, you talked about some metrics, some of the uptake, you know, talked about some of the, the technical advantages. What about the business value aspects that you're seeing? So, our customers are wildly evangelical about the business value that SAP drives for them. In, in many ways, they, they've shaped their, their, their organizations, they've shaped their success, their revenue curves around SAP's success. In fact, when they deploy SAP, you know, they're, they're looking to take that, that their organization from a revenue perspective and their organizational success to the next level. And so, they, they many, in many ways, they, they attribute the, the success of the organization to the deployment of SAP. And, and, and not just, the, ERP was, was a 90s um, 
a 90s curve. Now we're talking about combining real-time analytics with that ERP. So and now, now, when I was, I was at PeopleSoft back in the, in the late 90s, and we always talked about the dream of, of having that sort of, that, 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 that dial that told me to do something, and the, 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 the gear or the lever that actually did something back in the ERP system. Well, it was very disconnected back then. You, you actually had to have somebody that said, okay, I'm reading that dial, I'm reading that gauge, now I've got to go figure out which lever to pull or which switch to throw. With an SAP, it's automatic because there's certain processes that, that, that happen that are happening at machine speed or they're happening beyond the comprehension of at one individual. In other words, the, 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 the system has to, has, to, has to take over and has to understand where the, where the business logic is going to be driven and ultimately flip the switch or turn that dial that, that makes your business hum. And that's the power of the vision, bringing analytic systems and transactional systems together that's so exactly that right. decisions can be made in real time that humans you know, can't make. I'm not saying you can take the humans, uh, you know, the, the old humans of the last mile. It's not mile, the Terminator. But, but, uh, but nonetheless, you can put humans in a position to make decisions much, much faster. And again, that drives business value. And, I mean, we've been predicting you know, for you know, the last 12 to 18 months now, you're going to start to see an uptick in IT spending as a result of that because of the business value drivers that, that you're seeing. Do you, do you buy that thesis? Yeah, so at, at Sapphire, we, we had the pleasure of having, um, having dinner with Jeb York, the owner of the San Francisco 49ers. And awesome. he's an amazing guy. Yeah. I don't know if you ever had a chance to sit down with him, but you should definitely get him on the queue. Who? John, Jeb York, uh, Jeb York uh, owner, uh, owner uh, of the 49ers. 49ers. Young guy, dynamic, you should, you should, you should get him on theCUBE, because he, he'd be awesome. He's we very broadcasted that live, the press conference he did with um, um, Under Armour and uh, yes. at, at Sapphire. He's very technically savvy, yeah. but, but, but he cut right down to it and said, you know, Kevin, it's all about, he said, we're building a new stadium. And he said, I can go out there and I can spend 30 million bucks on this <laughs> super duper score, scoreboard that does all this kind of you know, whiz bang stuff, but look at the power, look at the smartphone that's sitting in your hand, and look at the, look at those 60,000 people in the stadium. Combine this with the power of that smartphone, deliver the real time analytics that is personalized to that fan's experience, and you've got that fan for life. That was brilliant, right? I mean, the second screen, and I'm going to invest in the bandwidth and the second screen experience as opposed to a, a giant jumbotron yeah. that I have bragging rights so on very, for two we're years. We're very close to the 49er organization. One we met Jeb over there. Um, my friend runs. Um, in stadium customer experience, and he just hired my other friend who's going to be the CTO of that group, nice. John Paul. Uh, I don't think it's probably announced yet, but uh, in fact, I just leaked it a little bit. Don't delete that, <laughs> check it from the record. Um, but, that's, but they're building out the tech there that they're going to take to other teams. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the stadium stuff yes. that they're doing. They're going to bring this to other franchises. And all powered by HANA, by the way. Yes. So all that 100% experience, that fan experience, is powered by HANA for real data, real-time yeah. data in memory analytics. It's going to be very Star Trek-like, video clips to your smartphone. I mean, imagining some amazing uh, experiences, not just text messaging. So, you know, it's just a killer opportunity. Um, but let's, let's, talk, let's pivot that, with that in, into your job, because this is the world you're living in. So you come in uh, cold to, uh, uh, SAP from a sense of, you have no baggage of SAP religion, other than what you've known from the outside. But at EMC Ventures, you had a, a peek into the future by working with startups, you have a lot of experience, so you pop into SAP, what's the deal? What do you look at? What's, what's jumping out at you? How are you getting your arms around it? And also you then, we're doing alliances, now you're doing a P&L. Uh, is it, what's your charter? What's your objective? What are you, what's your marching orders? Um, I wake up in the morning and, and I remind myself to ask why five times. Not, not, not why am I waking up, but certainly when I'm in the meetings with, with a lot of folks that have been at SAP for some time, I find myself asking why five times. Many, in, many, in many cases, there is, no, there is no good reason for doing it the way that things have been done you know, for the past 30 years. And so th th that, that, sort of, that sort of disruption, I think, was the reason why they they like me, and the reason why they brought me in is because I, I, I think I'm a little bit outside the box. I come from a different perspective, coming from a, you know, I started out my career at PeopleSoft, as I mentioned to Dave, but so th 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 that, that cut my teeth so I understand about you know, the applications, but then a 10 year run at EMC taught me the power of the infrastructure and the power of data, the, the power of information. That, 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 that is... Um, the converged infrastructure that, that Han is driving the front through the front door of all the companies with, right? I mean, that's HANA's major software power is on top of the infrastructure. I think what always surprises the heck out of me is like if you, if you, look, at, if you look at traditional converged infrastructure, you know, like a VCE or a FlexPod, it's, um, it's the simplicity of that 
in, in it, you're really not, you're really not doing anything that's totally engineering, you know, uh, rocket science here. We're really we're just putting peanut butter and jelly together. But the, but the simplicity and the power of that is beautiful. And I think we, we should never forget that. So, you, so what's your charter? How many people are working for you? You have some marketing budget, you have marketing objectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're actually marketing to specific target customer bases. So what's the plan? Initially, so I got 70, 75 plus folks across, across the world that are, um, that we're the global team doing technology alliances and the managed cloud as a service business because it's so closely aligned with the BD activities that we're doing with tech partners. Like I mentioned, the VMware and the HP deal. So, as, as far as the you know, marketing activities, I've got, I've got a marketing yeah, yeah. team which doesn't directly report to me, but they make, they're matrixed over. There's, and, 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 and uh, oddly enough, we, we are, I, I, when I speak to the marketing organization and the team behind it, I, I always stress that we're marketing to three different constituents. We're marketing to, to external partners, so like your HCLs, your Tatas, your Wipros. We're marketing to SAP customers that you can deploy traditional SAP applications in these private clouds, and oddly enough, and ironically enough, we're, we're, we're marketing to SAP itself, because you've got 66,000 folks within SAP that are looking for the next wave, the next big thing, and it's, it's about taking traditional our licenses that, our, you know, on-prem licenses that our customers have come to know and love over the years, and they're now putting those into cloud economics. The, it's a, great, awesome. it's a great place to be. So you've got a lot of creativity. So it sounds like it's, a, it's pretty green field for you, but you've got to manage the landscape. You've got to kind of watch the internal politics a little bit, but you have a lot of tools at your advantage, a lot of technology internally, SAP. So it's kind of herd the cats internally, figure out what can work, what, where you can work, but really the cloud is what you want. I mean, I can see you know, these vendors having private solutions. Go to market. I mean, if you're CSC, I mean, <laughs> it's like, they're going to roll their own, right? I mean, kind of thing. Is that, what you're, is that one of the main things? So, the, the first point, it, it, SAP's a machine. It, it, SAP has, like I said, 66,000 folks, about half of those are field facing. You put, you put a product or the right idea into that channel and SAP will execute against it maniacally, which, which is great. Yeah. Um, and if you, you bring up, you, bring up you know, organizations like CSC and HCL and Tata and Wipro, these are also organizations that have a tremendous amount of SAP knowledge and, and, yeah. and just DNA in the organization. They're looking for the next big thing. They, they, it's got to be baked though. You can't put un, not baked stuff into those channels, right? It, I mean. But, 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 but the, 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 good, the good thing about it is that there's a huge win at our back because customers it's, it's not like you know, SAP is putting its head in the sand and saying you know, the cloud doesn't matter or the customers don't want subscription-based subscription subscription -based adoption or pricing. Everybody wants that, of course everybody wants it. Everybody, the market demands it. And so that, that sort of wind at our back is, is, is what's propelling the managed cloud as a service business forward, which, which is awesome. Okay, Kevin Chu, congratulations on your new role um, at uh, SAP, GVP, p &L, Technology Alliance is right in your wheelhouse. Exciting time, HANA's exploding. It's funny how HANA just, it's been in the works and just crept up on the big data world and said, okay, we'll take it from here, almost, almost a little bit you know, mature tech. Now some will argue the use cases are a little bit uh, different than Hadoop, which they are, but for big businesses, it's working. It's highly disruptive. Congratulations. Great to see you, so thanks for coming by. I know you uh, did a flyby, took some time out of your busy schedule. Great to see you. Kevin Chu, tech athlete, uh, CUBE alumni, Inside the Cube. This is uh, SiliconANGLE Ones continuous coverage live from San Francisco. We'll be right back with our day two wrap up after this short break. <laughs>